Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language and the words we use every day. If that's the sort of thing you're into, subscribe and click the little bell so you'd never miss a word. A while ago, a fellow content creator, Justin Trouble, asked me to investigate a particular word that seems to be dividing the world these days. This word's history goes deep, deeper than I originally thought, and there seems to be two different definitions depending on which side of the political spectrum you're on, so I'm going to try and give both of those. Nationalism. The left definition. Noun. An idea that one's nation is superior to all others and deserves to hold power over those inferior to them. The right definition. Pride in one's country, culture, and fellow countrymen, and a belief that it is important to take care of one's own before aiding others. History and etymology. We'll start by taking a look at the word nation and its origin. Nation can be traced back to the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European word gene, the same word we get genetics from. It originally meant to give birth or to beget. In Latin, the G sound dropped off the front of the word, and it developed in the nationem. This word meant birth, origin, breed, stock, kind, species, race, or even a tribe of people. In French, it became nation, which meant a race of people or large group of people with a common ancestry and or language. It wasn't until it was borrowed into English that the specifically racial and genetic aspects slowly started to fall away. It still hasn't entirely lost that part of its definition, as the left still kind of includes this aspect in their definition of the word. Now, the Oxford English Dictionary has the earliest English definition as a people or group of peoples, a political state. And it was first attested in 1330. Early forms of nationalism, even though they may not have been called that because the word didn't exist yet, were usually based on ethnicity or religion, like the Jewish revolt against the Romans in the 1st and 2nd century, when the Jews attempted to kick out the unwanted Romans who had come into their lands. Well before World War II, nationalism kind of became the inner workings of how our systems work between peoples. And that system kind of began to break down before the beginning of World War I. Nations began creating bigger and bigger binding treaties between nations, creating an atmosphere of internationalism. With these treaties in place, one nation would attack another, and all nations involved in the treaty would be required to defend their ally. This simply escalated the number of people involved in a conflict until it enveloped the entire Western world, and even further in World War II to the entire world. Had we not had this atmosphere of international cooperation, World War I may have just been a small regional conflict over an assassinated aristocrat. This is one of the reasons why some on the right and myself prefer a more positive and inclusive definition of nationalism because that definition would have prevented some of the larger wars if we had that kind of nationalism. It would have prevented many of the large wars through history. Now, during World War II is where a lot of the definitions the left use for nationalism come from when it Italy and Germany began exploring a different kind of nationalism from the traditional one. Instead of focusing on caring for one's own people within that nation, it was built on a top-down economic model with an expansionist tendency towards globalism that required a war footing entirely for the system to work. This is where today's left gets their definition of nationalism, and this is what they fear a form of nationalism that says we get to control everyone in the world because we're better than them. 
I don't think that necessarily is included in the word nationalism. It doesn't imply that we believe we're better or we believe we should control others. It just implies that we need to take care of our own. So I lean towards the right definition of it. The left lean towards theirs. And this is just one of those communication breakdowns we have between the two different sides where one person says two people say the same word and they both mean something not entirely different, but pretty close to entirely different field research prescription and commentary. So I went through a lot of the responses I got to the field research I put out. Most of them were about caring for one's nation, caring for one's people, patriotic values, and a lot of them had to do in, with pride in one's nation or ancestors or culture, values or language. So that's where I got my definition for the right definition of the word nationalism. I didn't get any responses from anyone on the left, so I think I need to find a way to get that, seeing as Part of what I want to do with my channel is help communications between the two sides by defining the words and helping people understand what's meant by them. I also asked Justin Trouble to provide his input on what he thinks about the word nationalism, because I thought since he recommended the word, he probably had his own take on the word, and I thought it would be fun to get his perspective. Now, I started watching Justin Trouble's videos back around, I think it was the Battle of Berkeley, where he was exposing what Antifa was doing at the time and who they were really attacking. And I've been watching most of his Antifa videos ever since, watching his exposés of who they're attacking, what's going on, what's really going on in these different conflicts. And I've grown to respect his position on a lot of subjects. So I'm going to put a link to uh, Justin's channels on BitChute and YouTube down in the description below. So here's Justin's analysis of the definition of the word nationalism from a couple different perspectives. Benjamin has asked me, how would I define nationalism and how do I think the left defines it differently? Well, I'm not sure how I would define it because when it comes to defining words, I try to be very careful and very precise and very factually correct. I prefer to do what this channel does so well, which is to research the etymology of a given word, but I'll leave that to Benjamin because he does a much better job than I. My immediate thought about the term nationalism is that it's a contradistinction to the term internationalism, and in that sense, it's kind of neutral. I have heard that patriotism is love of one's nation and that nationalism is hatred of other nations, but I don't buy that. Indeed, it seems that the term nationalism has been increasingly demonized by, well, unpatriotic people. It seems that nationalism is synonymous with patriotism, but increasingly, some sources are changing the definition of the word nationalism. Kind of like the way that, well, at least it seems, they're changing definitions of things like gender, for example. I haven't made a study of it, but it seems to me like they're trying, they're intentionally trying to change the word gender from meaning sex to meaning a social construction to be well, to serve their socio-political agendas. Now, as far as uh, how does the left define it differently than myself, well, I don't really think of myself as right-wing or opposed to the left-wing. I don't really think of myself as opposed to the right-wing either, and I don't think of myself as in terms of left versus right. I'm either both or neither, depending on whether or not I have to be forced to make a binary choice between the two or not. Now, I notice Merriam-Webster still defines nationalism as, quote, loyalty and devotion to a nation, unquote. Merriam-Webster is an American source, and we shouldn't be very surprised if it's more, well, nationalistic than a source from the UK, with, I guess, a little less than half their nation leaning towards internationalism over nationalism. Now, let's look at Oxford English Dictionary, a UK source. They define it as, quote, identification with one's own nation and support for its interests, especially to the exclusion or detriment 
of the interest of other nations, unquote. So we can see that the UK source holds it in more of a negative light. And that shouldn't be very surprising with the sort of anti, the rising anti-nationalism that we see over there in the UK. I have this book from my shelf, Isms and Ologies by Arthur Goldwag, published in Great Britain and in the USA in 2007. And under nationalism, they write, Patriotism, wrote French statesman Charles de Gaulle, is when love of your own people comes first. Nationalism, when hate for other people other than your own comes first. This may be uh, at least one of the sources behind this growing sort of trend to think of nationalism as a negative thing rather than being synonymous with patriotism. But then again, I'll leave that to Benjamin to untangle these threads and to figure these things out. They continue, nationalism is defined as the belief that the chief attribute of one's identity and the focus of one's moral obligations derives from membership in a particular nation. Ethnocentrism, the belief that one's own language, culture, and blood are superior to others, is different from nationalism because it's not tied to a place. So in a sense, they're trying to say it's like ethnocentrism, but in slightly different because it's not tied to a place. And ethnocentrism is supposed to be a negative thing because, you know, it's supposed to be uh, bigotry. The entry in this book continues, but it's not centrally relevant, so we'll just leave it there. Back to my own thoughts. To me, nationalism is still synonymous with patriotism. At this point, it does seem like society is sort of having a tug of war over this term nationalism and the concept behind it, but I do tend to think of nationalism as just being the contradistinction to it. Well, that's my two cents. Thanks for asking, Benjamin. Thank you for your input, Justin, and everyone else, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or feel you've learned something, leave a like and share it with a friend who you think might learn something from it. If you'd like to support my program, down below there's a link to my Patreon, Subscribestar, and PayPal. And until next time, keep on learning.